Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Thank you for subscribing to our yes. show. If you haven't already done it, please do so now while Miss Stacy tells us what's happening today. Well, we have Pearl from Steven Universe on Cartoon Network. Dee Dee Magno Hall, are you ready? We're getting yes. fun. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Our guest is an accomplished actress and singer you love as Pearl in Steven Universe on Cartoon Network. She's also appeared on Broadway and in the national tours of Miss Saigon, Wicked, and If Then. Oh yeah, and she co-founded the mommy singing group, Mama Bears. She is fabulous, we're so happy she's here with us, and she is Dee Dee Magno Hall. Hi! Welcome! Yay. You guys are fabulous. Hi! Oh, thank you! So, so great to have you. We've been so excited and it's been great kind of working this out and having you here and you're, you're super busy so we're glad that we finally got to take a moment from the heat. It is hot. Absolutely. It really Enjoy is the hot. air conditioning yes. and just have a little chat. Yeah. I would like, well, so thank welcome. you so much. Thank you yes, for having yes. me. Yes. We're, we're, we are honored to have you. Oh, yes. goodness. Um, <laughs> Shall we get right into it? Yes. Because we have so many good questions for oh, you. Oh, wow. Humbly <laughs> speaking. Um, you obviously play Pearl on Steven Universe, yes. one of our favorite shows. Yay. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, so what's it like being on that show? Uh, with that with that ensemble, you know? It's it's amazing. It, voiceover acting, as you, you know, it's, it's a dream come true for me. Yeah. I've, I, for as long as I can remember, uh, watch, I grew up watching all the Disney movies, um, especially the musical ones, mm -hmm. and um, I've always wanted to voice a cartoon character, so being on Steven Universe, and being on a show like Steven Universe is such a dream. The, the whole crew and cast, um, they're wonderful to work with, and I'm yeah. just saying that because they are. They're, they're pretty yeah, awesome. They are. They they're are. super fun, so friendly, and all very passionate about this mm -hmm. beautiful show about love yeah. and uh, a lo yeah. love for all. And so yeah. um, it's no surprise that it has reached so many people all over the world in such a positive and beautiful way. So I'm very proud to be part of Well, this. and we had Zach Callison, who plays know, Steven on the show not too long ago. My and he baby. Was, I did a no. baby, did a little baby. It was a little um, baby. <laughs> and so he was saying, you know, that it just to be, you know, to be putting that kind of message and that kind of love and hope and positivity out there really meant a lot to him. And so, I mean, obviously, does that, I mean, you're a mom. Yeah. And so how does that, I mean... It must be a cool thing to share with your kids. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's some shows that I do that I can't really share with mm -hmm. my kids. Um, speaking of which, the, the, the last uh, Broadway uh, show that we did, my husband and I did a show called Next to Normal um, at East West Players, which is um, the longest running theater of color in America. And um, it was a really, really, really intense show that I could not, we could not have our kids right. come watch us right. do the show, even though both mom and dad were in it. Um, just because of the content, it was just a little bit too strong. Yeah. Right. Um, but, uh, but, but Steven Universe is something that we can enjoy and, and share as a family together. So mm -hmm. um, the, all of the messages are so, uh, they can be very, I mean, some of the shows are very silly and fun, right. and then some of them are really deep and serious and, yeah. and speaking some very um, heavy, heavy uh, um, messages mm -hmm. and, um, and lessons that sometimes might be difficult to talk to your kids about, your friends, your parents. Um, and Steven Universe does it in such a simple and beautiful way mm -hmm. that um, I, I, I just, I love that I can enjoy the show with my kids. Yeah. And, um, and I remember the first time that we did watch it together, my, my youngest at the time was two. Oh. And he... Was it confusing? He was, like, he was watching the screen and then like he could hear mommy's <laughs> voice coming out of Pearl's mouth and then he would like look over at me and then look at the screen and then look over at me and, and then my oldest son, who. Um, who at the time was uh, eight, he um, he kind of got it, you know. Right, right. Um, and so now they're five and, and twelve, 
and uh, and they get it a little bit more. And yeah. I, I'm hoping that it, it earns me some cool mom. I was going to yeah, say when they go to sure. school. I hope. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. Uh, well, it, well, when I first started, I was volunteering heavily at my oldest kid's school, and uh, oftentimes when I was volunteering, they would call me. At first, they would call me Caden's mom. That's my oldest son's name. And then after the show came out, they were like. <laughs> Um, Miss Pearl. <laughs> they would call me oh, Miss Pearl. Miss Pearl. <laughs> it was neat. That's awesome. That's so yeah. cool. Yes. Well, it probably comes in handy uh, in any situation as a parent. It's like, well, what would Pearl? What would Pearl do? Would Pearl yes, do? Absolutely. listen to Pearl. <laughs> Absolutely. I so, love it. so, like on a weekly basis, do you guys now all sit around the TV and watch the episodes? Yeah, when it, especially when yeah. the new episodes come yeah. um, mm -hmm. come out. Uh, my son sometimes will can't wait for me, so then he'll he'll watch it, and then Cheater. I know. But he's really good. I'm like, so how was the episode? And he's like, oh, I don't want to tell you, mom. I don't want to spoil anything for you. Nice. So we'll watch it. He'll watch it again with That's me. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. That yeah. is really cool. It's yeah. Beautiful. Um, I don't know. You well, of course you could talk about this because you already have the job. How did you actually end up getting to be Pearl on Steven Universe? <sighs> well, it, it it's sort of. Um, being a voice actor for for me was uh, was not a very easy process. <laughs> I, I I was living in New York City working with um, uh, a voice manager. Um, she was a jingle manager, uh -huh. and I kept telling her, "How can I cross over to doing some voice acting, um, not just singing, but some speaking roles?" And and she said, "Well, that's a very tight knit group." You know, it's it's really really difficult to get into, as you you may know. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I moved out to California, I asked if she could maybe recommend some people that I could talk to, um, and uh, for whatever reason, there was just it just never there was never a connection with anybody. Then I was with another a theatrical agent who had a friend in the voiceover world um, who happened to be a voiceover agent and I was introduced to that person. Um, I went in and sort of had an audition type of like a pre pre preliminary meeting with them. They gave me a bunch of sides. I, I went into their little in, in house studio and recorded some, some takes and from that they started putting me out and auditioning for mm -hmm. like Everything, yeah. everything voiceover, whether it was commercials or video games or animation. And uh, I felt like I auditioned for like uh, hundreds of hun years. <laughs> yes. Hundreds of years? Yes. yes. I mean, they were like, I I I'm like, I'm. <laughs> I've got to get one of these, you know. I yeah. I, I thought, thought it was a like, numbers you've game. You've never had more rejection in your entire <laughs> life. Wow, it was <gasps> it was really saddening. Yeah. And so finally, I called my agent and I was like, um, "Hey, dude, what, um, what's going on? I'm I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Is it me? Can you, exactly, it's tell not you, me. It's me. It's not that. It's, yeah. <laughs> But I'm like, can you just help me out here? What can I do? Mm -hmm. And he says, there's really nothing you can do. It is. It's a numbers game. It's um, you never know when they're looking for your voice specifically. And it, as it turns out, Rebecca Sugar was looking for somebody who was musically inclined. I mean, like who she wanted all of her characters to sort of um, sing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's something that I. I, yes, I like we're to do pretty darn good about <laughs> yes. that. Oh, well, we're going to get in depth on that. <laughs> All right, so would you say then that Steven Universe was the break? It, it really was, at least this time around, mm -hmm. because the only other voiceover job that I ever did before Pearl was... It was like a fairy tale series, but it was like way back in the day. Yeah. Um, I did a voice for Princess and the Pea. I don't know if you. No. Yeah, okay. I don't. It was it was a really yeah. long time, probably before your time. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. No, no. Right, um, <laughs> I'm going to be your grandfather for no, God's no, sake. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, but uh, but it was it was a while ago, and I don't even remember what I said or what mm -hmm. I did, and it was just a teeny bit part. Um, so many years later, uh, Pearl was my sort of breakthrough. So when you went to the callback, were you? Excited and Tim, did you feel intimidated? Were you nervous? Like, what did, what did you feel? Because I'm um, sometimes when you don't know what to expect, it's great because you don't know what to expect, and sometimes when you don't know what to expect, it's <gasps> yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. They sent me some music to learn, mm -hmm. and then I had to go into the studio and record that. And it was, uh, it was a demo of the, the opening, the, the, uh, the opening of the show. Yeah. Um, 
and it was Rebecca singing and playing the ukulele. <laughs> And I just wanted to sing just like her. I, I didn't know why. I felt like I needed to sound exactly like her, which, you know, I we both have very different voices. Right. Yeah. But I really tried to phrase everything the way that she did it and um, thinking that that was going to, like, you know, help my audition. But... Um, um, I remember getting a phone call and saying they would like to for you to come in to the studio. And they had, I, I remember there was, Zach was there, and Jen Paz was actually there, Kate McCucci was there, um, Matthew Moy, and, um, and we did like a little, we did a little run, um, and I guess that was our final callback. Mm -hmm. And I guess months later I got the call that I got it. And wow. I could Months not. Months later, huh? Yeah. It's, it they made you like, wait that it long? It seemed like it was like... It, it was probably like three days. It felt like months. <laughs> it probably yeah. did. Sometimes it can take a long time. I know. Do, are, I you know. A, are you a kind of just do it and forget it? Or are you I a little... I have to, because yeah. at that point I had auditioned for so many. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You were like, this is oh, another one of those. <laughs> except this one's a bigger tease. Yeah, I know. exactly. Yeah. I saw I saw the you know the breakdown, the picture of Pearl, the very, mm -hmm. very early drawings of Pearl, yeah. and then the description. And I felt like, oh, she's sort of... I don't know why I remember this, but it was she's sort of like motherly to in the in the character description is what I remember. Right. Um, and I thought, oh, I could do that. I'm a yeah. mom. I could yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's sort of what I tried to do also in the performance read. Um, and I was using my own voice, which you know I, I didn't have to put on. And, a sort of is voice, that what they wanted? They kind of they just didn't. Wanted, yeah, they yeah. wanted to just more hear natural, more yeah. natural yeah. voices. Yeah. And, yeah. And then, of course, during the course of the show, uh, Pearl's, Pearl's voice <laughs> gets a little bit more emotional and a little yeah. bit more dramatic, yes. and she's definitely gotten a little bit more zany. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. And then there's the whole rapping. And the, and the Pearl just, raps. The, she does. Yeah. Well. It is, yeah. We, does we, she? We, <laughs> I love it. Um, so when, I mean, let's go, let's go back, because we have to start. We I are. Wanna, we are. So check this out. Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> Broadway, and then Hollywood. Hollywood. So take us back, yeah. you know, and, and give us a little, you know, the Mickey Mouse Club and how <laughs> you all started. I've always loved singing. I grew up with uh, a karaoke machine, a singing machine, and um, and I just had it in my room. I, I, t I took it from the living room and I brought it to my room and I would sing, I think, nearly every day. Um, and growing up, we have a lot of, um, so I'm, Fil I'm, I'm of Filipino descent, and we call them uh, Filipino pancit parties. Pancit is a type of noodle, a Filipino dish. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and uh, it was just where we would we would all gather for whatever somebody's birthday, anniversary, wh what have you. And uh, there would always be a lot of food, and there would always be a karaoke machine. And so, I think my parents just knew that I always wanted to sing. So yeah. I, I participated in a lot of singing talent shows at school. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a local news channel, local ten, uh, Channel Ten news channel in in San Diego, which is where I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was in the Navy, so he we, he was uh, stationed there. But um, I joined this contest, and it's not unlike American Idol, where the you know the viewers call in and yeah. right, right. So um, I won this contest, and the prize was actually to sing at a nightclub. And at the time, I was 11, so <laughs> I couldn't take that prize. Yes. So instead, they asked me to open up a new um, attraction at SeaWorld. And they would just invited me to sing, and then they televised it, and they put it on the news channel, and, and some people had watched it, and then they offered to be my manager. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started auditioning for things. And uh, again, auditioned for Boy, everything. Boy, you under just the like get discovered left and right. <laughs> no, no, talk no, no. about being discovered. She's yeah. in the right place at the right time, yes. doing what she's supposed to do. There, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of that, a lot of yeah. being there, yeah. being at the right place at the right time, and then right meeting the right people. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I I I got discovered, I guess. Um, <laughs> auditioned for lots of different things, and the Mickey Mouse Club was my very first professional gig. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, and you were 11. I was about 11, 11 12. 12. Yeah, so did they give you um, a real idea of what you were going to do? Did you have any idea of, of what 
was going to happen. So during the screen test, we got a taste of what the show was going to be like. And the best way for me to describe it is uh, Saturday Night Live for Kids. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. I, yeah. It was really, really fun, super fun. Yeah. It was really hard to call it work. Um, but we were... It's sort of how, how I learned about a lot of different things, about camera work, you know, um, hitting, hitting, mark, hitting your yeah. marks, what cameras to, to, to look at, reading scripts, table reading, um, you know, listening and reacting and um, where the lights are and, uh, you know, going into makeup and hair and mm -hmm. going to the wardrobe and there's a craft table and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah. all these fun things. Um, we also learned choreography and worked with uh, vocal coaches, and um, it was really a great stepping stone yeah, to everything else that I would, yeah, you know, yeah. just dream the of doing. The love affair began. It really did yeah. start there, but um, but yeah, it it was uh, it was a great experience, and again, it was really hard to call it work because, and it was we started out with twelve kids. Um, and I think the age range was from like nine to 14. And as we got older, and there were two adult hosts, mm -hmm. um, Fred and Moeva. And so as part of the original cast, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Definitely. Are you kidding? I would have a t-shirt that says, <laughs> I was the original one in the, yeah. Listen, totally. there's only one original, so uh, it's very special. Yeah. It's uh, very it special. So, you, so yeah, sure. while you were on the show, some of the big names that we know today came started coming on the show, right? Yes, just to name a few. Yeah, what just, are some of the few? Let's just let's name name them. Britney Spears, Britney Christina Spears. Aguilera, yeah. Justin Timberlake, um, Ryan Gosling, Harry Russell, Tony Luca, J.C. Chazé. I mean, there's so many people. Mm -hmm. Lindsay Al. I mean, there's. Didi Ma. Ah, yeah. well, totally. Not? Isn't it amazing yeah. that since so many of those kids like uh, went on to become like something great? Like even you, you know. Oh, I, um, it's so cool. <laughs> it's very different. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think too, because I mean, I've been performing since I was little, and it's like I think. When you just know it's in your cells, like you're not your parent, like I'm sure were your parents going, Dee Dee, it's time to sing, it's time to practice. Like you just wanted I to wanted do it. To you do were it. not forcing. Never, you never know, forced. forced. My yeah. parents were always so supportive. And mm -hmm. also, um, they, they, would like they would have liked me to have something to fall back on, yeah. you know. Right. Um, so you I, did. You had <laughs> Broadway <laughs> to fall back on. The Great White Way. Oh. So, yeah. so t tell us a little bit about that that part of your life. The so, Broadway. Um, so the Mickey Mouse Club, uh, after the Mickey Mouse Club, the party was a, was a singing group right, that, right. that stemmed off of that, um, also under the umbrella of Disney. Yeah. Um, so we toured all over the country. With, it was a singing, five, five kids from the Mickey Mouse Club. We sang, we recorded four albums with Hollywood Records. Um, we were actually the first uh, to be on their label. And um, that was way back in the day. So we were uh, opening up for people like Taylor Dane and High Five and Vanilla Ice. You Call got me the bad. <laughs> Taylor hey. Dane, right? Yes. Totally, baby. Love I remember Taylor that Dane. Stuff. I yeah. know. I yes, I totally dated myself. But anyway, yeah. um, so after the party, um, actually, I actually got wind of Miss Saigon. I heard from one of the adults in in the the Mickey Mouse Club, that he had seen the show Miss Saigon, mm -hmm. and he thought of me. He, he, he asked me if I'd ever heard of it, and I said no. I went and bought the soundtrack, fell in love with the music, yeah, and gorgeous. while I was on tour with the party in London, I was able to see the production there. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I was 16, I was sitting in the audience with my mom, and I just saw this this young Asian girl, this ingenue on stage, she, she, you know, I'm like, she looks like me. I mean, I, I can sort of identify with this, this uh, person. She's just starring in this Broadway show and she's singing all of this beautiful music. Mm -hmm. And, and I just leaned over to my mom and I was like, mom, I want to play that part someday. And, and she, uh, she was remembering <laughs> the skimpy clothing and the <laughs> love scenes yeah. and, you know, the content of the show. I don't know if you know it. Not yes, till you're I 25. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was I like, ah. I've seen it oh, you have few seen times. it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so she was like, I think you're, you need to wait a few years before that. So a few years passed. I finally auditioned for the show um, and um, 
you know, eventually after many auditions, I, I was, uh, I originated the second national touring company. I originated the role of Kim in the yes. second national touring company. Yes. So cool. Yeah, it was really cool. That was another Man, dream. that must yeah. have been a trip, yeah. right? So, to like, at a young age, say, I want to do that one day, and then all of a sudden one day you do, you're do you doing yes. that, you know? I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And so not one day, you know, and there was not one day that I, you know, was I wasn't grateful for mm -hmm. that. You know, I never, I never forgot that feeling that I had sitting in that audience and just like looking up there and going, "Gosh, mm -hmm. I would love to do that someday." Yeah. Yeah. And I always remind myself because you know when you're doing a, a show um, eight times a week. For, for me, I was doing it that that show for six times a week because the the role was so demanding. They right. they split it um, with another uh, actress. Um, it gets it gets sort of two shows on Saturday. Yeah, two two shows Saturday, two shows, two shows Sunday. Um, but because I was only doing six shows a week, I didn't have to do two in one day. Thankfully, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it can get a little bit monotonous. You mm -hmm. can get tired. You can come to work sometimes feeling uh, a little bit, you Run know, out. like maya. Yeah. And so, um, but I had to always bring myself back to that. 16 year old girl and thinking that there's got there's got to be at least one person in the audience who's watching mm -hmm. you on stage and just going saying the same I, thing saying the same yeah. thing yeah so I, that's mm -hmm. definitely something that I try to keep in mind anytime I yeah. feel tired or mm -hmm. you know yeah. having a bad day or whatnot but right um, right because it was bad a dream. Days? well you know with everything that you have going Everybody. on with all the oh, awesomeness. Dee just burst the bubble. Oh my god. god. I thought Dee Dee was like this magical person There's that you never have a There's a on her shoulder. I'm yeah. a unicorn. Um, no. Um, no. <laughs> so then Wicked came. Wicked came uh, a while after. Yeah. Uh, but I did Miss Saigon for a really long time. Yeah. Um, I met my husband there. <laughs> and uh, after getting married and having... Uh, having one child. Um, was he, you met your husband, he was in the show? Yeah, he was in Mid Saigon. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah so cool. um, so we, we, he actually, after our first child was born, he was offered uh, a part in Wicked. And we, uh, and we traveled the country together because I just, we just picked up our lives, mm -hmm. our four month old baby, and wow. we toured all over the country. Wow. And I thought, Okay, I'm gonna be mom. I'm gonna be wife, and it's totally fine. I'm totally fine with this. And then 18 months later, uh, the role of Nessa Rose came up, and the gal who was playing it at the time um, just whispered to me that she was leaving, and that if I wanted to, maybe I could put it put it in my agent's ear that maybe I might want to audition for it. And so I did, and I didn't know what to expect because we had this 18 month old. Um, but I auditioned and I, I and I booked it. And at the time, my husband was playing Fiero, um, so I, I got the part of Nessa. We got to be in Wicked together, touring yes. the country. Um, although we never had any scenes together, True. we got to yeah. hold hands at the bow. At the Yay! End. Yay! Yeah, that was, that's <laughs> that's <a fun> cute. <laughs> that's another amazing show. Yes. yes. Such another amazing iconic show. Such an awesome um, show. But when you sort of opened that door again, did it just? Whoosh, whoosh, yeah, I mean, it's something that I can't really keep <laughs> in my back pocket, you know, yeah. for too long. I w was always singing to my kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I remember singing to my my oldest when he was still a baby, um, and I would just, you know, he would cr cr I would cradle him and I would sing to him, and I remember him looking at me going. Shh, mommy, be quiet. <laughs> and I was like, do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm like, I used to get paid to sing. And he was like, shh, mommy, be quiet. And he just put his little fingers on my mouth. <laughs> so uh, sometimes my kids don't like it when I sing to oh. them. Well, it's fine, it's fine. They're my toughest audience members. No, yeah, yeah, they yeah. always are. It's man. so funny though because now at twelve, sometimes he asks me to sing him a lullaby, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, okay, wait, let me warm up. <clears throat> no, I can't. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I I feel like I'm, you know, it's I got bitten at a young age, and I don't think that I could ever not do this in some capacity. Yeah. Um, 
you know, which is why I, I came up with Mama Bears. Mm -hmm. um, it, it actually, it, it's, the way it happened was just like so bizarre and weird and crazy, but like, um, I just love that song from Lord uh, yeah. Royals. Royals. And, and for whatever reason, I just love the beat of it, and I, I uh, just started, one night, like at four o'clock in the morning, I started rewriting the lyrics so that it would apply to my life as a mom. Right. And so I, I wrote this parody, and then I just went up to my other mommy friends who happened to be in Miss Saigon. We were all in Miss Saigon at some point together, and, and I was like, what do you guys think about this? And we had some friends that had a studio, we had some friends that were musically inclined, and then friends that also had a, you know, a video camera, and we're like, why don't we, why don't we just so like, make funny. a video? It's so funny, I love the scene where she's, where she's folding laundry. And the, <laughs> yes. the, you, you guys have to share on YouTube, Mama Bear's Lord parody, it's bananas, it's so <laughs> funny. And the, and the lyrics are so hysterical. Oh, yay. And every mom, or mom-to-be is gonna go, I get it. <laughs> yes. I totally get yeah. it. I mean, it's such it comes from such a place of truth. Well, it, well, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But um, but yeah. So we just were like, just because we're moms now, doesn't mean that we have to stop singing. You know, doing what we love, and mm -hmm. so um, that's sort of how that was born. Just yeah. um, at a play date, we were all just at a play date together, and so we're like, cool. let's do this. It's so great. Yeah. Um, you have because I want people in this part one to know about. Uh, the show that you're doing, the right. one night only. Yes. One night only. Um, September fifteenth. September fifteenth at the Ford and how Theater. They can get the, how they can get tickets? And um, I will be posting something. I, I don't know all the details yet, but okay. it's um, it's a show called Taopo. It's T A O P O, and in Tagalog that means we are here. Um, it's a it's a show that's going to be very Filipino festive, um, lots of Filipino folk dancing, traditional mm -hmm. dancing, and um, a traditional music. And um, I'm going to be singing with alongside Jennifer Paz, uh, who also voices a cartoon character um, in Steven Universe mm -hmm. called Lapis Lazuli. And she's also another member of Mama Bears. So um, we're going to be singing some songs together, and I hope that. People can come and join yeah, us. Yeah, so, Absolutely. So Twitter is the best way to kind of keep up with you, right? Twitter, um, I'm on, on Twitter, Dee Dee Magno Hall, and um, on Instagram, Dee Dee Magno Hall Official. Official. So I, p I post all kinds of stuff Great. on there. Great, okay, good. Okay, good. So now, we go back to Mama Bears. You guys have your first single out. Yes, yes, it's so called what? So What. And so, was, what? <laughs> so What. So um, What. But it was written by Anthony Fedorov, who's um, Jennifer Paz's uh, fiance, um, who is an American Idol alum. And he wrote that song because he was inspired by a woman who had like seven children, mm. and she homeschooled all of them. And he just was inspired at how uh, she was so hardworking. And even though after seven children, after homeschooling all of these kids, she, um, she still like was able to just do everything. She was like super mom. And, um, and I think that he just, this song was more like, uh, for, for, for us, um, we don't know what's going to happen after, yeah. after having children. We don't know what's going to happen with our careers or, or, you know, what happens when they've grown and, and, and leave left, you. left, mm -hmm. leave. After all the exactly. investments leave you the made. Nest. <laughs> yeah. Leave, yeah. leave the nest. <laughs> um, but that's okay. Yeah. That's okay that we don't know and, um, and that we sort of just go with the flow and make make things work mm -hmm. and and, um, and so that's sort of what that song is about well that concludes part one with the wonderful Dee Dee Magno Hall we're gonna be back next week with part two yes we will in the meantime keep up with us on Facebook Twitter and Instagram we love you guys thank you so much for watching and just remember you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz. <laughs>